Hey everybody, in this session we're going to continue our intro to Godot. This time we're going to be doing top-down movement using our keyboard or something like this, a gamepad. If you missed any of the previous videos for how we got to this point, the links to those are in the description below. If you are new here, welcome. My name's Drew. I teach people how to get into game development. If that sounds like something you might be interested in, please hit the subscribe button below. I've got many more videos just like this on the way. So quick recap of where we left off last time, we have this really simple world map scene, and in there we have an instance of a hero scene. Uh, it doesn't really do anything right now, if I run the game, it just moves back and forth. What we're going to do today is replace that with some actual input from the user to move this character around. So let's dive into the script behind our hero. To do that we can just click on the script button, and it uh, shows us what we did last time. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and just delete all this. So the first question we need to ask Godot is, is the user currently pressing any keys or holding down any buttons? Uh, and to do that, there's this really nice class baked in called input. And on input, there's a function called isActionPressed. And this wants a string. And as you can see here, it's auto-suggesting some presets. Uh, this string will correlate to something in the project settings. And there's a few common ones here that are common for most games, but you can also make your own. So we'll say um, UI down. If I save that, and what this does is uh, return a boolean, true or false. So we can say uh, if input is pressed, we just want to like print something to the console. So how about print uh, down? When I run the game, and I'm going to hold down my down key now, you'll see that we see, start to see down appear in the console. Well, let's close out of this. Right away, you can see how we could use that uh, to do kind of like what we did last time. So if we said um, move and slide, which is a function we learned how to use last time. Uh, give it that vector 2 we need and say, how about 0 speed? Now when I run the game, you can see that the down key will move the character down. You might be thinking, okay, easy enough, we'll just take this block here and you know copy it down to cover all the cases, up, down, left, and right. And you can do that, but let me demonstrate something to you. So the problem here is that say we have UI down and UI up, at the same time, uh, and we say like negative speed. Right now the code is technically checking for both directions. Uh, the way users actually play these kinds of games is that there are t points in time where they have multiple directions held down, not just one. So in the case that the user has uh, down and up, this instruction um, for the up case is just going to immediately blow away the down case. And that can lead to the game feeling kind of sticky and sometimes kind of cheap. I'm going to show you the method I like to use in my top-down games that is a little bit more forgiving for the user and overall just feels nicer to play. So rather than individually checking each direction one at a time, we're going to keep track of all the different direction keys using an array. So I'll go ahead and delete this and we'll just pass for now. Um, up here we're going to add a new uh, member variable, which we talked about last time, called held directions, and it's going to be an array. So down here in our physics process, we're going to iterate through a different array. That's going to be all the possible directions that we can add. So we'll say for dir in, now here's a new inline array that we're just defining right here. We'll do all of our directions. Now we add our colon, and we'll check if this one's pressed. So we'll say var is pressed equals the same thing we used before, input dot is action pressed. And now what we can do is construct, see how it wants a string here? We can actually construct that out of the um, parent array that we're iterating through right now. So we'll say UI underscore, and then you can just add strings together. So plus whichever direction we're on right now, which is going to be captured with dir. Up here, as we iterate through this, you see that uh, the first time we'll be on left, then right, then up, then down. Now we'll know if each direction is pressed because we're capturing it right here and is pressed. And so what we want to do now is start adding the pressed directions to our held directions array. But we want to be careful because if we just start adding them, if this is true, then that's going to add duplicates because we're not doing any validation that, that we haven't added this direction yet. We only want one addition per direction. You know, To do that, we can say var index of direction equals our held directions dot Here's a new Godot function, uh, find, and we'll pass in dir. And what, do, um, what find will do is search the array and look for an instance of the direction that we're searching for. And if it finds it, it'll return us the index of that. So if left, for example, if that's the first one, it'll return zero um, or one. You know, it's zero based like many other programming languages. Uh, if it doesn't find anything, it will return negative one. Knowing that, we can start writing some logic like if 
index of direction equals to negative one, then uh, we're at a comment here. So um, direction not yet present. Actually, Godot is upset with us, so I'm going to change this to a print. And then we'll do the opposite case as well. So else, it means that this uh, direction is already present in the array. So if we don't have this in our array yet, let's go ahead and add it, um, if it's pressed. So here we'll check again if uh, is pressed. If that's true, then we're going to say held directions dot push front our direction that we're iterating through right now. Um, Godot is nice. It has these methods for uh, pushing to the front or the back, where a lot of languages just kind of default to pushing to the back, or they use a different name for pushing to the front, but I think this is nice and readable. And then down here, in the case where the direction is present, let's go ahead and check that if it's not pressed, we'll remove it. So if uh, not is pressed, I think in Godot you can also do this, if not is pressed, which may be more readable, but sometimes I have trouble turning my JavaScript brain off. So if not pressed, um, we'll do a similar thing, but this time we're going to say held directions dot remove. Remember, we're already checking if it's um, in the array, so we know it's here. And if that's true, again, this value, index of direction, will be greater than negative 1, and that will be the index that it found. So what remove wants, this is a function baked into Godot arrays, uh, remove will ask for the index that you want to remove from the array. So we'll use that here, index of direction. And so in this case, the direction is in the array. It's definitely present in here. And it's no longer pressed, though. So it was pressed before for us to add it. Now it's no longer pressed. We're going to remove it. At the end of all this, we'll be left with this nice array. We can print it out right here of held directions. And it'll uh, preserve the order that the directions were held in, because we're always pushing to the front. For us to know the latest direction that the user is pressed, all we got to do is check the first one. Uh, but something to note that's important in Godot is that if you just do um, same syntax as like JavaScript, where you just in the brackets you uh, pass the index you want to check on. Uh, but if I run the game, you'll see that we, we have a problem right away. We get an error saying invalid get index zero on base array, and that's because Godot doesn't have a concept of undefined. If you um, Notice our array is starting empty here, but then we're immediately checking for the zeroth one in something like JavaScript that would give you undefined, but Godot just crashes. So first we need to check to make sure that we actually have stuff in the array. Uh, so we'll say if held directions dot size, this is how you check how many members are in the array. We'll say if it's greater than zero, uh, then we'll indent. And um, if it if it is greater than zero, then we'll check on the first one. So now I'll go ahead and run the game again. No crashing this time. If I hold down my arrow keys, here's down. You see that down is latest, left, right, up. And now you won't be able to see it because you can't see my hands. But uh, if I hold down left and then add right, right comes back, but I'm still holding left. Now I'll release the right key, and then we get left again. One thing I also want to call to your attention or bring to your attention is that uh, Godot also has um, nice input methods that are similar but a little bit different. So here, check this one out. Is action just pressed and this one will only fire on the very first frame that the user has pressed the button so it's really good for like actions like pausing or um, maybe talking to an npc or something like that and then there's an equivalent one for released uh, which would be another way to implement this however there's risk here because if anything causes the game to lose focus on the user's computer like if the game's running in a window and then you focus on a different window so now this the game is like focused in the background, then sometimes that release won't fire properly. So you can like hold down a key and then be expecting a release to happen, but it never actually happens. So it can cause like keys getting stuck. Anyway, end of my rant. I'm going to clean this up. Now that we have a direction coming back, let's actually use it. Uh, but first, what I want to do is create a little helper function here. And we'll say like get movement. Uh, and that's going to take in the direction because we've got. Uh, four different directions and we need a different vector to value uh, for each direction type in here We'll just do some quick logic and the way I want to approach this is actually making a dictionary. So uh, Let's say vectors And then we'll have the keys match our possible directions and then we'll say vector two um, Left is going to be negative speed And then I'll quickly copy all the cases here. And 
now what we can do is just return uh, the value in the key that's passed in. So we'll say return vectors, uh, whatever direction we pass in. So if we pass in left, we're going to get this vector two back that has the x going the proper way. So up here, what we can do is go ahead and update our direction variable. So direction equals uh, same thing we had down here. We're not actually using this yet. Uh, if say we were going to like make the character change the direction they're facing, like maybe a left sprite or a right sprite, uh, we could use that using this direction variable. We're not using it here, but we'll probably use it in future videos. So I thought I'd leave it here. Um, and then now let's do our move and slide. To do that, we'll um, use our function that we created. So get movement passing in the same direction. And we're already saving it to the variable, so we can say direction. I'm going to run the game now. And we see that our character will move based on the direction that's being returned. I want to add, too, that the principle we talked about before is still in play here. So if I hold down left and then add right and then release right, uh, the player still moves the way that I expect. Also, bonus, because we've used Godot's baked in keys, you know, UI left, UI right, if you have a gamepad connected to your computer, it'll automatically pick up on these UI left or UI right, UI down and up keys. So you don't have to write any extra code to support gamepads, which is really awesome. That being said, uh, we by default don't have support for WASD keys, which is a really common thing in PC games, computer games, you know, where uh, WASD keys will do the same as the arrow keys. Uh, but Godot makes it really easy to add that. All we got to do is go up to our project, project settings, and in here there's a tab called input map. In this tab you see the uh, contents of all those keys that we saw before, like UI accept, UI select. Uh, here's UI left, right, up, and down. So what we can do is just find our directions, UI left. I'll click this plus button, select key, and now it prompts me for a key. So on my keyboard I'm pressing A. And then I'll hit OK, and now the A key will also trigger the UI left response. So I'll just do this for all the other directions. And just like that, now we have WASD support. I also want to point out that everything that you do in input map can also be done with code. So if you wanted to create a screen where users could rebind the controls to be whatever they want, uh, you can control all that stuff through GDScript. That's the end of our top-down movement part. In the next video, we're going to get started with collisions and some other concerns that come up when you're making a top-down game. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please hit that like button. Uh, like I said before, I've got many more videos like this on the way. So if you like this, you want to keep learning, keep making stuff in Godot, please hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, requests, whatever, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And then also, if you're working on a game or want to start working on a game, we have an active Discord community of people that also make games. So be sure to join that. Tell us about your project. We'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much. See you next time.